Hello people, in this video we want to look at cryotherapy in ophthalmology. See cryotherapy is there in many many things, right? Basically you are going to use what? Some very cold temperature and some tissue, you will try to freeze it and um, uh, damage the tissue, right? So did you understand what cryotherapy is? Extreme cold uh, temperature to uh, use as treatment. See this, these are some cryoprobes. For cataract extract extraction, they are using these two, A and B for cataract extraction. Then C for cryopexy, cyclocryopexy and D for internal structure. What is that? It is going like this and coming out like this and coming out like this from both sides. What is that? So let us get started guys. So, is this what cryotherapy is? No, this is not cryotherapy. The temperature should be minus 40 to minus 100 degree centigrade. Then only intense cold only if you give there will be tissue injury. So, that is called as uh, cryotherapy. Okay, how will you achieve all this? You need two things. You need the cryoprobes which you just now saw. Those four probes you saw, right? You need cryoprobes and a cryo unit. This is the cryo unit. Okay, ophthalmic cryo unit this is. Okay, so cryopexy, what is pexy? Cryopexy means to produce tissue injury. So, here we are doing tissue injury by using intense cold which is achieved by a cryoprobe from a cryo unit, cryo, cryo, cryo. Okay, what is the principle? The working of cryo probes, cryo probes is based on Joel Thompson principle of cooling. So, there is some principle of cooling given by Joel Thompson. You can look at all the physics with that, okay. Cryo unit is there. This is the cryo unit, ophthalmic cryo unit. It uses three gases, freon, nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide as cooling agent. Freon, nitrous oxide, remember nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide as cooling agent. So, which are the three gases guys? Freon, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide. Say nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. Let us go further. There are many types of cryoprobes. There is uh, sizes are different. 1 millimeter for intravitreal use, 1.5 millimeter straight or curved probe for cataract extraction, 2.5 millimeter for retina, 4 millimeter for cyclocryopexy. So, let us just look at this image yet again. So, A and B for cataract extraction, straight and curved. Straight and curved, both they are saying is for cataract extraction. Then, C is for cyclocryopexy. This one they said is 4 millimeter, isn't it? This one maps here. And this one is some internal structure. We will look at this. Oh, this is the internal structure within how it will be. Oh, okay, okay. This is how internally these probes will be. So, it comes like this. And then it goes both the sides like this. Okay, okay. So, the temperature produced depends upon the size of the cryoprobe tip, duration of the freezing process and the gas use. So, what and all does the temperature depend on? It used on the tip that you are using, the gas that you are using, the freezing process, etc. Now, now let us look at the uses uh, exactly where and all are we using them. <clears throat> Lids. Cryosurgery may be used for cryolysis, for trichiasis, cryotherapy, for warts, molluscum, contagiosum. Basically, they are trying to destroy something. You can understand cryolysis for trichiasis, that is eyelashes which are misdirected, they are inward, right, and they are hurting the cornea. So, that one, then molluscum contagiosum, all those uh, viral uh, uh, growths that happen on the eyelid, warts, <clears throat> they want to remove all these. Then cryotherapy for basal cell carcinoma and hemangioma. So, they are using it for the cancer also, carcinoma. Conjunctiva, where you, will you use? Hypertrophic papillae in the vernal catar. So, basically in uh, vernal catar that is VKC, right, uh, that is allergic conjunctivitis, whenever there, is, there are papillae which are hypertrophic and you cannot uh, just uh, reduce them in size, they are using cryotherapy. If you remember VKC in that we have seen treatment of large papillae, you will give supratarsal injection that is shown here. Otherwise, you can do cryo application, etc., surgical excision. If there are large papillae and uh, you cannot remove them easily, or they don't subside. So, they are giving supratarsal injection or they are giving this cryo application. 
okay then uh, cornea herpes simplex keratitis may be treated by cryotherapy in herpes basically we have seen all these punctate epithelial keratitis dendritic ulcer geographical ulcer etc but as such mention of uh, get treating the cornea with uh, cryotherapy can't remember okay lens cryo extraction of lens this is not performed anymore then why to read this so earlier they used to use cryo extraction of the lens okay in cataract and all but now intracapsular cataract extraction is no more performed what do they do now then what exactly do they do now some phaco emulsification and all is there right okay ciliary body <clears throat> cyclocryopexy for absolute glaucoma and neovascular glaucoma so so this uh, okay that makes a little sense the ciliary body they want to damage so that it doesn't produce the inter, uh, aqueous humor or something is that what it is what is absolute glaucoma that means they are absolute means it is completely optic nerve damage or what neovascular glaucoma so these people will have pain right so they are uh, damaging the ciliary body so that it doesn't produce any more aqueous looks like in absolute glaucoma coming to retina guys retina cryopexy is widely used for sealing retinal holes and retinal detachment so if retina has a hole they are trying to seal it with cryopexy prophylactic cryopexy to prevent retinal detachment so if retinal detachment is going to happen then prophylactically they are giving this cryopexy anterior retinal cryopexy anterior in retinal ischemic disease retinopathy of prematurity to prevent neovascularization retinopathy of prematurity where does this happen this happens if there is a newborn uh, which has low birth weight etc premature babies they give oxygen and that will cause retinopathy so they are saying if there is retinal ischemic disease anterior retinal cryopexy is given in retinal ischemic disease to prevent neovascularization so that there is no new blood vessels is it cryo treatment of retinoblastoma and angioma so these cancer right retinoblastoma angioma they want to treat these tumors guys so now you have understood the uses of uh, cryotherapy so they are doing cryo surgery cryolysis then they are using cryopexy cryo extraction cyclocryopexy this is cyclocryopexy is for ciliary body that is the one we saw here right there was one image which was saying this one they will use for cyclocryopexy this one 4 mm one cyclocryopexy so we now know what cyclocryopexy is that's for the ciliary body in glaucoma absolute glaucoma neovascular glaucoma they are trying to damage the ciliary body looks like finally we will go to modes of action of this uh, cryopexy produces required therapeutic effect by different modes so how what and all does it do it does tissue necrosis as in cryo uh, cyclocryopexy so to that ciliary body what did it what did they do tissue necrosis cryopexy for tumors so all those uh, retinoblastoma and all they are going to do cryopexy production of adhesion between tissues so there will be adhesion between tissues so what will happen the retina which was having a whole detachment so it is becoming proper so retina pigmental epithelium choroid and retinal detachment so i think they are going to stick them together kind of a thing vascular occlusions in coats disease what is this coats disease so here there will be abnormal development of blood vessels in the retina so they will give vascular occlusions adhesions of the cryo probe to the ice ball in the tissue looks like they want to extract the lens there's a cataract they want to extract the lens and they want this cryo probe adherence to the ice ball so that they can remove the tissue or something is it looks like okay so these are the modes of action it does tissue necrosis it produces adhesions vascular occlusions adhesion of the probe itself to the ice ball looks like okay so they made an ice ball is it because it is so cold they touched it and it became an ice ball or something okay let's take a recap in this video what and all we have seen we started off with cryotherapy in ophthalmology so this is not cryotherapy cryotherapy means intense cold minus 40 to minus 100 degree centigrade this produces tissue injury you need cryo probe and these are the cryo probe straight and curved and this one is for 4 mm something they have different dimensions 
and cryo unit is the other part of it then here you will have the gas free on nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide gas as cooling agent so there are different probes in different sizes they are using 4 millimeter for cyclocryopexy for choroid right ciliary body ciliary body in glaucoma absolute glaucoma right uh, then uh, they are using the thinnest one for intravitreal use right to go inside the vitreous looks like then uh, where and all you will use this for lid to uh, do cryolysis of for trichiasis cryotherapy for warts molluscum contagiosum for basal cell carcinoma hemangioma for conjunctiva you have seen if there are some large papillae in uh, vernal keratoconjunctivitis then in herpes simplex keratitis to treat the cornea then for lens uh, in cataract then see but this is not done anymore now they are saying lens part ciliary body absolute glaucoma neovascular glaucoma retina for uh, sealing the retinal holes prophylactically to prevent retinal detachment anterior retinal cryopexy you can remember this and anyways to treat retinoblastoma and geoma etc what are the last slide what is the last slide here modes of action tissue necrosis adhesions vascular occlusions adhesion of the cryoprobe to the ice ball that's all for now in this video bye bye